Hi, it's Matthew Reed here from How to Repair Pendulum Clocks, and today we are going to be looking at colliting or re colliting a clock wheel. The assembly here comprises a steel arbor with integral pinion, that's a small driven steel gear, the wheel, which is pretty self explanatory, and a third piece of material, which is a brass boss or collet as we call it on which the wheel fits. Now if you work on uh, anything that's pre-mass production and interchangeable parts clocks, that's basically 17th, 18th, 19th century clocks, you will come across this kind of construction. The way that an assembly like this is made is that uh, once the arbor is made concentric, then the collet is soft soldered in place. So it's soldered in place with a relatively low melting point lead based solder. That itself is then turned concentric with the arbor, then the wheel is mounted and riveted in place. And that's all great until, uh, for whatever reason, uh, you decide to move the collet on the arbor because effectively it is impossible to get that collet and therefore wheel concentric and flat again. So the, uh, the first lesson there really is uh, never to move the collet on the arbor unless you know you're going to have to uh, recall it. So this uh, collet had been moved on the arbor and as we can see here the wheel is neither flat or perpendicular if you like to the axis of the arbor and uh, it's not mounted concentrically. Now the outer flatness we see may look unsightly to some but it's actually not a major problem because the wheel is rotating relatively slowly and uh, outer flatness doesn't cause major issues in change of center distance of the two mobiles i.e. depthing whereas mounted out of um, mounted non-concentrically is a problem. So the first thing we need to do is to get the wheel and collet off the arbor and you can do this in either order it doesn't really make any difference. I decided to take the wheel and collet off together uh, and then separate the collet from the wheel just because I could uh, access the rivet easier and I do that as you can see by heating in a spirit lamp flame it, remember this is a soft solder so you don't need masses of temperature and the reason I heat the arbor more and allow the heat to travel up the arbor is because the wheel has two let-in teeth which are also soft soldered and I don't want to disturb them and generate more work. I then mount that assembly in the lathe and begin to turn away the rivet. You can see the rivet here and I use a graver which is a handheld cutting tool and um, sort of gently working at the collet because I don't want to disturb the wheel too much until the, the wheel is liberated. As we said before we know or we know reasonably well anyway that this wheel is actually bored concentric so we've got we've no problem there if your wheel is eccentric in relation to its bore then check out my video on using the boxwood chuck which is how you would be able to um, center it again anyway once the uh, the wheel is off the collet we then make a new collet in this case I'm using cast brass you could use a, a metal like uh, brass CZ131 which is uh, quite malleable in terms of uh, riveting which is useful you might want to anneal that material first so I just uh, turn the, the new collet um, oversized to shape I then um, center drill and drill until it's a sliding fit on the arbor Next thing is to solder this collet in place and obviously we want uh, a reasonable sort of accuracy in terms of where the wheel is going to drive on the uh, escape wheel pinion in this case. So um, we solder again a spirit lamp flame, we want to minimize heat, do the whole thing slowly, looks a bit scruffy but actually this is all going to be um, removed or turned away as we proceed. Now the new collet 
is nothing uh, like concentric at all, which is absolutely fine. So what I do is I begin to generate some concentricity using, again, the graver in the watchmaker's lathe. Now, if you use the flat side of the graver, or an edge, if you like, then what tends to happen is that the work will become smaller diameter, but it won't get any more concentric. So the way I deal with that is by using the point of the graver first to gain concentricity. Once you have concentricity, then you can smarten the whole thing up. The wheel seat I form as a cone, quite a wide cone to begin with, and then slowly reduce the angle of that cone as the wheel begins to fit on. This is really a kind of surefire way of making sure the wheel and the collet are a really good fit. It takes some time, but as you can see, eventually we get the wheel to be a really uh, snug fit there. A first test for flatness and concentricity. The small uh, lump on the rim of the wheel you can see uh, travelling round is one of those uh, later Latin teeth that I mentioned. I undercut the face of the collet and the corner where the mount for the wheel or the seat for the wheel and the face meet because I don't want any sort of debris or uh, burr on the wheel to prevent it sitting absolutely flat. Once the wheel fits on, I turn the collet away to form a rivet. I'm actually turning a sort of undercut on the rivet so I don't have to hit it quite so hard. Uh, once that's done, then I place the assembly, uh, the new collet, in a brass split stake, which is just a way of holding the, uh, the, the work without too much marking. And I use a punch from a staking set. Should have actually modified this punch a little bit more, but um, you get the idea to rivet the wheel on, checking that uh, it's flat at all times, and I do this by rotating the wheel. You could use a completely sort of circular punch, or even a press if you have one to do this, and that might actually be more sort of controlled rather than these individual strikes of the hammer. Once the wheel is riveted on, we could, in theory, just stick it in the clock and it would be absolutely fine. But for sake of aesthetics, uh, I put it back in the lathe and tidy up not only the rivet, but the back of the collet to shape it something like the, uh, the other wheels in the clock. And there we are really. Uh, this is um, really useful, I hope, in terms of turning things concentric. And as I said earlier, the message really is if you're dealing with these clocks where the collet is held on by soft solder, if you can, avoid moving the collet on the arbor because it's almost impossible to keep it concentric and flat and you will have to end up re-colleting. And again, if you have a clock where the wheel is wobbling like this one was, hopefully this video is of use in remedying that problem. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and as always, thank you for watching.